Welcome to Declassifying the Paranormal. Here we reveal the secrets that sinister organizations attempt to conceal from the world, objects and entities that could shake the very foundations of what we think is, and is not, possible. Today we have secured documents belonging to the SCP Foundation, and will reveal to you the nature of SCP-4146. Item Number, SCP-4146 Object Class, Safe Special Containment Procedures Due to the inherently uncontainable nature of SCP-4146, Foundation efforts are to be directed towards the suppression of any public knowledge of the anomalous effects of SCP-4146. Foundation web crawlers are to monitor the Internet for mentions of money, gambling chips, or other objects in combination with mentions of human tissue or remains. In the event that there is any indication of awareness of the true nature of SCP-4146, Class B amnestics may be applied as necessary. Prior to amnestization, civilians are to be detained and debriefed in order to ascertain the origin of nestic effects. Description SCP-4146 is a phenomenon affecting all markers of value in gambling taking place in the Chicago metropolitan area. During the process of exchange between players, the marker will spontaneously transmutate into a piece of human tissue of equal weight and approximate size. Affected markers will not decay like normal human tissue, but are otherwise physically indistinguishable from non-anomalous tissue. The largest single piece recovered was a femur with attached muscle and skin, substituted for a 12.4 kg gold bar. Cassidy Sid Cassidy circa 1926 An estimated 15,800 tons of human flesh has been produced by SCP-4146. DNA testing with surviving relatives has confirmed that all flesh is from Chicago spirit associate Sid Cassidy. Born Sigismund Kol J. Sok, June 27, 1885 in Warsaw, Russian Empire, Cassidy immigrated T degrees Celsius Chicago in 1893. Joining the Chicago spirit during its ascent in the early 1910s, he rose to oversee three of the spirit's most lucrative gambling dens. Cassidy was last seen in late May 1928. SCP-4146 includes an antimimetic property, whereby individuals do not notice the physical properties of affected markers, instead treating them as normal gambling markers. Secondary effects, such as the staining of clothing or furniture with blood and other substances, will be similarly ignored. The existence of SCP-4146 was first ascertained by junior researcher Harold Leaf in 1957. While using nestic agents to counter the effects of SCP-8, researcher Leaf noticed his wallet was filled with large numbers of scabs, teeth, and a human ear. The tissue was traced back to Leaf's earnings at a neighborhood bingo tournament two nights previous. Junior researcher Leaf requested and received voluntary amnestization of the experience. Addendum 4146-28-F on January 14, 1929, Chicago Spirit member and Foundation informant Casper Fishface Metzinger was admitted to St. Joseph's Hospital after collapsing in the street. Doctors determined the cause of the collapse to be shock brought on by an unknown foreign object in Metzinger's abdominal cavity. By the time Foundation agents were able to speak with Mr. Metzinger at 11.30 a.m., he was delirious from fever and pain. Agent Timothy Sullivan questioned Mr. Metzinger, while Agent Jacob Weiss served as stenographer. The pair were only able to get a stream of consciousness diatribe from Mr. Metzinger covering multiple, unrelated subjects. After the discovery of SCP-4146, review of Mr. Metzinger's references to Sid Cassidy alerted Foundation researchers to the connection between Cassidy and SCP-4146. Who did this to you? We did, and took him through and through. Through the hall doors you go Sid. Counting cards and blessings, a girl never skimmed as fast as a water strider. One leg too many. Fix six five mix. Chappie said you took cash and ate it with beans. We took you in a can, too. Mama, I looked up at you through the lake. Shout words through wine and piss in the dark for time. Chappie is believed to be a reference to Richard Davis Chapel, leader of the Chicago Spirit Organization at the time. Who did Chappie take, Cap? No one, I never took a thing. 
Cassidy took tips made lips through lace cylinders. Sid you can't go on like that, you're getting greedy for living. Oh. At this time Mr. Metzinger began to writhe in pain and ceased speaking. Stay with me, Cap. Who got you? The end never comes, in a cold pickle jar. Scream and scream in circles forever. My skin in the game off my nose. His nose is skin like silk from a page of easy numbers. The boy, he took hold like cash. Chappie says Sid can be crash courses in earning a hard day's pay. He ran three long lengths of pork tenderloin for a flush. Rocked porched eagles in black, chewing Canadian bean soup. Oh, daddy, liver mush regrows. Mr. Metzinger briefly lost consciousness after delivering this statement, after which he continued speaking incoherently for another two hours. At 5.15 p.m. Mr. Metzinger expired. Autopsy found the cause of death to be massive shock from internal trauma. Further examination revealed bite marks originated in the kidneys, working through the liver and intestinal tract. Between 3.30 a.m. and 3.35 a.m. on January 15, 1929 Mr. Metzinger's remains vanished from from Foundation custody. The reason for this disappearance is unclear. Thank you for tuning in. We hope that you enjoyed this broadcast. If you did please subscribe, like and share it around. If you have any particular case files you'd like us to cover in future broadcasts leave a comment below and we'll get around to it shortly. Tune in again tomorrow for more revelations.